In this video, we're talking about how to save for a house. We'll cover the key steps as well as some do's and don'ts so that you can save for that down payment. Welcome back, I'm Erica Kohlberg and I'm a lawyer helping you take control of your money. So be sure to subscribe for more money tips. Now the first thing you want to do when you're saving for a house is to figure out approximately how much you'll need to save for the down payment. You can estimate how much a house in your area is going to cost by going to a site like Zillow and taking a look at recently sold houses. So that'll be a good starting point. Now, a down payment is going to be a percentage of the full purchase price. You'll sometimes hear 20% as the norm for a down payment. So if you're looking at a $500,000 house, you'd need to save up $100,000 for the down payment. In reality, the average down payment on a house is around 12% or around 6% for first time home buyers. There's still benefits to putting down the full 20%, like you typically won't have to pay private mortgage insurance, but it's good for your planning purposes to know that you might not actually have to save up a full 20%, and I'll link a tool below that can help you calculate how much home you can afford. Once you've figured out around how much you need to save up for a down payment, as well as other substantial costs that you have to think about, like closings and inspections, then you're going to set up your plan of action. You do want to have a budget, and in this video, I talk all about how to budget for your goals and even have a free budget tracker that you can download. So I'll leave the link to that video below so you can watch it afterwards. But don't get so fixated on your down payment goal that you ignore other important financial goals, like saving up for an emergency fund or contributing to your retirement account. Another don't is that you don't want to just say, someday I'll have enough for a down payment. You want to set a concrete goal, a concrete date, let's say five years from now, where you'll have enough saved up to afford the down payment. And with that budgeting video, you'll be able to estimate the exact date and set that as your finish line. So once you have that budget set, let's talk about how to actually save. Now, I like to say that if you want to save more money, you have two routes you can take. One is to cut your expenses so that you're saving more of your income that's already coming in. Or the second route is to find ways to make more money. The best way to do it is usually a combination of both, where you're not only cutting more expenses and saving more out of that existing pie, but you're also bringing in extra income that you didn't have before. And you can choose to direct that extra money straight into your down payment savings goal. Let's talk about making more money first. One way is going to be to ask for a raise. You can miss out on a lot of money by not asking for a raise. A big don't is don't just expect that your hard work is going to speak for itself and your employer will voluntarily offer you a raise. Maybe that's possible, but a lot of times we need to be the ones to proactively ask for a raise. One of the things you can do now is just start keeping track of significant accomplishments at work so you can be more prepared when that conversation about why you deserve a raise happens. I go over all of the best tips for asking for a raise in this video. Another way to make more money is to look into starting a side hustle. Maybe you create an Etsy shop or start dog walking or you start a YouTube channel like me. Any extra income is going to help you get to your down payment goal faster. So if you have some spare time in the evenings or weekends, side hustling could be a great option. Also, if you're getting married, consider doing a house fund instead of a traditional registry so that instead of plates and silverware, guests are actually helping you get closer to buying your dream house. On the other side of the equation, saving money, I have some ideas for you to get to your down payment goal faster. First, Try to pay off or at least pay down your existing debt. Especially if you have credit card debt where interest rates can be very high, every dollar you put towards the principal of that debt, you're saving yourself money in the long run because now you won't have to pay the interest on that money anymore. Another tip is to make small changes to your spending habits that can add up. If you take a look at your past 30 days of spending, I'm guessing there are things in there that you didn't necessarily need. Maybe it's that impulse buy from Amazon or that third streaming subscription in addition to your already existing Hulu and Netflix subscriptions. Whatever it is for you, see if next month you can cut back a little on those extras and put those savings towards your down payment fund. 
I like starting off with seeing where we can cut these small expenses first, since those tend to be easy changes we can make. But something that you could also consider is taking a look at your big expenses each month and seeing if there's room for savings there too. For a lot of us, our biggest monthly expense is rent. So maybe you see if you can move to a more affordable apartment or get an extra roommate to help reduce your portion of the rent or move in with your parents if that's an option, which I did for a bit to help me pay down my debt faster. No shame in that. Looking at these big expenses you can save on is a way to really expedite the saving process because these could have a bigger impact than just trying to cut out your Starbucks coffee. Another tip for saving money for your down payment is to see if you can lower the cost of your student loans. I graduated from law school with over $200,000 of student loans and the average interest rate was so high that I realized if I wanted to reach my financial goals faster, I needed to figure out how to lower the interest rate so I wasn't paying as much interest. That's when I discovered SoFi and thank you so much to SoFi for sponsoring this section of the video. SoFi is an all-in-one personal finance app where you can spend, save, borrow, or invest, and they really help their members achieve financial independence and reach their goals, like saving for a house. If you are interested in looking into lowering the cost of your student loans, refinancing them could be an option for you. That's what I personally ended up doing, and refinancing my student loans with SoFi saved me thousands of dollars. They made the process fast, easy, and it's all online. SoFi cares about its members, and I'm proud to say I've been a SoFi member since 2016. So you can take a look at the link in my description to learn more about SoFi, and thank you SoFi for sponsoring this portion of the video. To give a quick recap before I get to my favorite tip, we talked about some savings ideas, like paying off debt, cutting down on unnecessary expenses, seeing if you can reduce big expenses like rent, and lowering the cost of your student loans. But the big one I have for saving for a down payment is to separate the money you've saved for your down payment from where you usually keep your money, like your checking account. That way the distinction is very clear and you're not tempted to spend any of the money that you've saved for your down payment. There are a few ways you can do this. Some accounts will let you separate your money into different buckets within your account. You might hear them called savings buckets or vaults, and you can set different goals for each bucket. For instance, one bucket for your emergency fund and another for your down payment. Once you've saved some money for your down payment, for example, then you just move the money into that specific bucket. Another way you can do this is to transfer the down payment goal money into a CD, Certificate of Deposit. A CD is going to allow you to earn interest on that money while keeping it separated from your checking account so that you're not tempted to spend it. You just have to check the rules because for some CDs, you might not be allowed to withdraw your money early. So just depending on the timing, if your dream house comes available, you want to be sure it's in a CD where you could withdraw early. Whether you decide to put your down payment money in a separate bucket within your existing account or a completely separate high yield savings account or a CD, the big tip here is to keep it separated so that you can just at a quick glance know that that's your money for the down payment that you don't want to touch. If this was helpful, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you next in this video where I walk you through how to budget so that you can get started on saving for your house.